water fuel cell preparation. Fill the unit with distilled water up to the correct level and pour back into a bucket. Starting with no more than an eighth of a teaspoon of sodium hydroxide, also known as 100% lye, which is included in your kit, place in the pre-measured amount of water and mix it together. You will begin to notice that the water inside of the fuel cell is turning brown. This is why it is sometimes known as Brown's gas, because of the coloration that occurs in water. This is perfectly normal as it is natural process of electrolysis that releases hydrogen from the water. HHO Generator Installation Find a location with enough clearance for the water fuel cell and its positive and negative contact points. If you are having difficulty finding a suitable location to mount the water fuel cell, a possible solution is to use the area in front of the radiator. Creating room in the engine bay may require removing the larger stock intake and replacing it with a smaller aftermarket intake. With mounting points established in the engine bay, it is time to install the water fuel cell mounting bracket. Unless usable holes exist in the mounting area, ones may need to be drilled large enough to fit the metal zip ties through. Once holes are drilled, loop the metal zip tie into one hole and out the other hole. Position the device so that it is easily accessed to fill with water and conveniently removed in order to be cleaned. HHO water fuel cell should be mounted flat, leveled, and secured to ensure that the unit cannot bounce around when the vehicle hits bumps or goes off-road. After mounting your brackets and determining where the cell will be placed, apply rubber protector to the bottom of the engine cell or contact point in the engine bay. The next step in this installation is to mount the water trap. Mount the water trap at a lower position than the intake port. The easy and best place to hook the vacuum line into is the PCV valve line. The PCV valve connects the crankcase to the intake manifold from a location slightly opposite the breather connection. Under the hood, choose an easy to reach space for the PCV enhancer. Mount the PCV valve enhancer using similar techniques as the mounting of the water fuel cell. Disconnect the hose attached to the PCV valve. Make sure you understand where the airflow is going in the system. This is important because the PCV valve enhancer has a certain airflow direction, even though it appears symmetrical at first look. Connect the output of the PCV enhancer to the intake manifold port of the PCV valve. The device itself needs only a small space, but remember that you'll need to access it to check for contaminant level and also be able to reach it with your hand for cleaning. Connect the PCV valve enhancer to the line using the T-connector. Connect the hydrogen line to the tube and the valve is installed. Next is the wiring of the positive and negative terminals on the water fuel cell. The first step is to find a good place to ground the negative terminal of the water fuel cell. The positive connection of the cell can be connected to any wire that has a 12 volt positive one running, like a wiper motor or other auxiliary device. This should be done on a line that is only live when the engine is on, and is on a 25 amp fuse. After finding your positive and negative connections, install the provided 15 amp fuse. Start the engine to test the amount of amps drawn by using the supplied voltmeter. While the system is running, take out the fuse and place the voltmeter needles into each side of the fuse connector to view how many amps it is used at starting. Amps will slowly rise while the system is on. Make sure that the cell isn't running any higher than 3 to 5 amps upon a cold start and leveling off at 11 to 14 amps when hot. The fuse is blown, then start at a lower amperage in your solution. Inspect the installation visually. Make sure all hoses are secured with clamps. Make sure the filter bowl, the transparent part, is hand tight only. And your install is complete.